In this video, we're going to look at an overview of the dashboard in Microsoft Clarity. Now, this assumes you've already gone into the settings, you've set up your project and you've got the tracking code and you've applied it to your website. So what we can see here is what happens is automatically it adds a filter at the top to look at the last three days of data. So that's fine. We're going to just keep that filter and I'm going to cover filters in more detail within another video and another related blog post. So for this one, what we're going to look at is along the top, first of all, what we've got is what I would expect for somebody to be able to look at and find within Google Analytics. So to start with, we can see the total number of sessions here. Again, within that three day time frame, we've got 746 sessions and out of that, we've got 592 distinct users or individual people. We can also see the sage, sages, we can see the pages per session. So on average, out of those people, they are going to 1.25 pages within a session. So we've also got a couple of other interesting things here, this scroll depth. So if you think about a web page, what we've got is the top that I can see within my device that I'm looking at the page. So if I'm in a um, using a mobile phone, obviously that is going to be quite a bit smaller compared with if I'm on a massive screen, I can see quite a lot of the web page at the top. Um, and then what happens is I need to scroll to go what we would call below the fold. So where we see sort of the, the bottom of the, the page within our browser or window, we then have a bit more that we can scroll down. So that is the scroll depth. So on average, people are scrolling almost half the way down the page um, before they then basically end that session. We finally on that top row got the level of engagement. Now the engagement's gonna show the amount of time that's spent on a page uh, on average, and then out of that, it's divided up with how much active time versus inactive. So people clicking on things or scrolling, that kind of thing is in terms of them being active. Next, we've got two charts that are showing clicks. We've got dead clicks and we have the delightfully named rage clicks. Now, if I have my mouse over this little information icon, we can see this is user clicked or tapped on a page with no effect. So that's basically saying somebody did something and nothing happened within a, they didn't get a response of any kind within a reasonable amount of time. So maybe it was a hyperlink that should take them to another page or maybe it was a button and they clicked on it and either nothing happened or it took a really long time for anything to happen. So that could signify that you've got a broken link. Um, I've also seen it on some of my recordings where people are, are just kind of clicking on a page, which is a bit baffling, but I've seen it where people literally there's text and somebody's clicking on it and nothing has happened. So it could just be that somebody has a little trigger finger and they're just clicking. So interesting. Then what we've got is rage clicks. So this is somebody that has rapidly clicked or tapped in the same area multiple times. Um, so it's kind of like in a in a clustered area within one specific place where they're just clicking in rapid succession. And that's when it tracks a rage click. Um, so that could also indicate dead links or again, a button that doesn't work. And again, I've also seen that on my own site where I don't understand why somebody is just clicking that many times. It's a little bit strange, but it's quite interesting to watch. So next, what we've got is excessive scrolling. So let's actually just change it just to see if we can get some ex excessive scrolling data. Um, let's go last 30 days instead. Okay, there we go. So that's good. That means that um, people are not just scrolling randomly. So that's where an, a user scrolls through a page more than expected. So they're kind of scrolling up and down vertically rather than horizontally in this. Um, and so basically they're just going up and down the page. Maybe they're looking for something and they're just scanning it really quickly and they're not finding what they're looking for. So they're leaving the page. So again, it could be an indication that the paid content needs adjusting. Maybe it wasn't clear the link that they clicked on and arrived at your site. Maybe they thought they were going to find something that they didn't. Um, what we've got next is quickbacks. So 
Again, if we hover our mouse, we can see the user navigated to a page, then quickly returned to the previous one. So there are interactions where somebody, again, might be clicking on a link. Maybe you've got a blog post and you have links to other blog posts and they click on one of those links. They land on that page and then they quickly come back to the page that they were on before. So that could be an indication of maybe the um, links that you have on a, on a page, maybe you need to go back and kind of review them and make sure that what you're linking to is relevant um, in the context in which you've linked it from another site or another page. Now we've got two bar charts uh, that are showing, it's fairly simple and straightforward, these two. We've got popular pages and referrers. So during the time frame that is selected, we can see how many times a specific page was visited, and then also for the referrers out of those pages visited, how many times have they come from a specific place that is then classed as the referrer? So based on someone doing a search on Google is where most of my referral traffic comes from. Um, we've got a bit of Bing um, and then some LinkedIn and so on. Now what we've got is JavaScript errors. Now, this is a little bit high, but I know what it is and I've kept it on there so that for another video, I can actually show that and and. Um, use it as an explanation. But what I can see here is the number of sessions that have JavaScript errors. So that could be, again, and that could also contribute to your dead link, uh, sorry, dead clicks or your rage clicks, and also reduce the amount of time that somebody might actually stay on the page. So it's important to, to keep note of those and, and review them. Then we've got three donut charts, um, browsers, devices, and operating systems. So this could be useful to see, okay, well, everything's fine for Chrome, Edge, Firefox, but maybe there are errors in mobile Safari or Chrome Mobile. Um, you could go ahead and then review and dig into specific browsers and also the devices that people are actually visiting on. So whether it is mobile, tablet, and so on, we can see that 86% is uh, from visits to my site come from people that are on some kind of PC, some kind of laptop or whatever. Um, so it could be, oh, okay, well, there's some issues on mobile. Uh, is it worth resolving or should I only be resolving something if it's an issue on PC and so on? Uh, and then finally, what we've got is a list of the the visits that I've got based on the country that they've originated from. So it could be useful in terms of me seeing are there issues, but only when people come from a specific site, uh, sorry, from a specific country, maybe there are challenges there. Um, you could also see how do people navigate depending on which country they originate from. So Probably wouldn't spend as much time looking at that data, but it could certainly, depending on the nature of your site and what you are um, actually trying to get across to users, that could also be an indication of needing to make changes or fixes on your website. So that's an overview of the dashboard. In other videos, I'm going to be delving into the actual recordings and then the heat maps. Um, so hopefully you found this interesting and useful in terms of getting an understanding of what these different metrics and analytics are actually showing you. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.